back to the GSL code. A more correctly known, I suppose, now as the WCS Korea Challenger League. Same tournament, same format, different uh, rules, I guess you could say. We're going into our final best three. We saw Nobles fall 2-0 to Golden. Yep, Golden was able to take his opponent out with, uh, not with ease, but with very interesting mind games here. Nobles just today not on the same level. And now we're heading into the last best of three of the day. We have another Protoss versus Zerg coming up, and this time it is Squirtle, the player who has been uh, known to be a starter player for a long time, then switched to LGIM, and he is up against a Zerg player, he's up against Album. So we are going to find out if Squirtle is going to advance today, or if the uh, former finalist of the GSL is going to fall into Code B. Yeah, that's what we're going to find out very soon here in just a moment. And of course, as you can see, we don't have too many information here about Alvin, who was formerly known as Dream, a player of Casper's 8th team. And we have Squirtle, a player for LGIM. I don't think we really need to introduce this guy. Great yeah. Protoss player, very strong also against Zerg, but still, he has to be careful here. We already saw a few upsets in the GSL, and of course, not only in Codes, but also here at the Challenger League. The Squirtle is a player who's been around for so, 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 so long in StarCraft 2. He's one of your, your icons of StarCraft 2, one of the best Frosts in the world. He always has been. And he's up against Album, who's relatively unknown, but sometimes unknown players have the advantage of not being studied. Yeah, that is definitely true. This is one of the main advantages that they have. He can see him to the right. Both players, exactly the same age. Both of them are 20 years old. Squirtle to the left here. Not impressed. Yeah, Squirtle is uh, very famous for being bored in matches. Yeah, that one gift comes to mind. That was one of the best, one of the best scenarios that we had. <laughs> Definitely. So. But there you can see him uh, looking like a boss, ready for his game. Alvo, on the other hand, he's bouncing already. He wants to get the game started. He is excited. This is his chance to go into the second round of Code A and also take down a very famous opponent. Yep. And. He may be able to do just that. The map is Akalon Waste, the first map, a two-player map here. A map and that we've seen earlier yeah. already in this matchup. With the air style we saw in Protoss vs. Zerg, we'll see how Squirtle wants to change things up. Yeah, Squirtle could go now for a gateway opening or a forge opening. What uh, choice he makes is something that will be revealed in a few seconds here at the GSL Code A, a.k.a. the WCS Challenger League. Korea, of course, games brought to you by Kalon Wolf. The water Pokemon starts to the bottom right of the map. He was formerly known as Boogie Boy. Can Boogie Woogie it up a little bit in this game. His new idea, of course, is... Air Giant Squatter. Of course, what Kalor is talking about is uh, Kobugi, the Korean word for Squirtle. So he's basically the same ID, just he had to change his ID. I position. had no idea. Yeah. I just knew that he was Boogie Boy, but that was actually like a hybrid name. No clue. Well, his opponent starts to the top left. We have the Zerg in blue starting for Kespa's 8th team. It is. 8th team AABM. Well, I guess he actually is ALBM and not Album, but ALBM becomes Album. I don't know. Let's just call him L. Yeah. Just like in uh, Angels, uh, was it Angels in the Outfield, that movie where the guy, um, God, what's the guy's act? The guy who plays in, in Back to the Future, what, why can't I think of his name? Christopher Lloyd, is it? Yeah. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah, I'm he says just call me Al and he names. points to his hat. That's what I think of when We're going to call him Al. I mean, I can live with JYP, with MC, with JD, and uh, TY, and all of them. But if you go for four, my limit is three. Yeah. So he's Al. All right, well, you know, we get to make that choice because we're like the first people casting them here. The thing is, like, Al does, does do what you would expect. He goes into the uh, pool first here, and uh, he's blocked by Squirtle's Pope. Uh, even going for the pilot block here. Well done by Squirtle, who goes for the gateway opening in this case and doesn't start with the forge first. I just see Squirtle, you know, he's watching that game earlier with Trap, and he's like, that looks really fun. I'll try that strategy. <laughs> he's like, I think that a pro a Zerg can't beat that. Nice cancel here. He could actually, if he wants to, block again. Already the third hatchery has been placed. And Squirtle. Uh, he's going to <laughs> yeah. 
he lets it go. Actually sticks around a little bit longer here and uh, now I can check the third base. Third base is of course already there. And let's see what Squirtle is going to do with this gateway opening that he uh, started. We have him with a probe still hiding here and placed down a pylon. And we have immediately the Chrono Boost on the Stalker. So no attempts of getting another base just yet. He can really go for a lot of aggression here. We've seen all these timings that Naniwa has been using at Dreamhack. was really successful. He has only one... Uh, uh, gas, so it starts to look more and more that way. There's the Nexus, so it's just the... It's gonna be a one gateway stalker pressure expand. And he could go into four gateways after this, of course, if he wants to. He could also do the Nexus cancel four gate. Let's see what he's chrono boosting back at home. Let me talk a little bit about what um, album uh, L ALBM uh, Big L or whatever has done in uh, the qualifier bracket that he was playing in uh, when he qualified for this league for this match. He took down two Protoss players with a 2-0. He won against Hero and he also won against Brown. Two very strong Protoss players, so that is really impressive, especially since he didn't lose a single map. On the other hand, we have with Squirtle a very experienced opponent that does not only have the experience in the booth, but also in this matchup. The last time we saw him play here was in the GSTL, where he was sent out by his team, three killed, took the win for his team, and eliminated players like JKS and Leenog, good Zerg players. So this is gonna be a Pretty cool, cl I don't want to say there's a Clash of the Tides, a little bit David against Goliath, but it's definitely a match where Squiddle has to be careful given the performance that we've seen from uh, ALBM in the Challenger League Qualifier. Yeah, we now see the third gateway, which will complete the fourth, uh, you know, if you add three to one, because he only had one gateway, of course, before. Look and he's kind of boosting warp gate research. You've been, you've been practicing your I, math skills. I uh, did get that one book called How to Count. <laughs> on it. Uh, it's really hard though, so I, I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> but you know, speaking of, of counting, you know, he can't count on that fourth gateway just yet because he added it so late because he wanted to hide it from the Zerg. So he only has three right now. The fourth one though will finish very soon. He can walk across the map with his Mothership Core, do a lot of damage with this, and then recall if there's too many links. Very early road run here, 640 already, and he knows now that Squirtle is moving out, ALBM that is, moves out with his units, and the Mothership Core is there as well. So this is going to be very, very interesting. A cool timing here for Squirtle. This is the aggression that we've seen in more and more Protoss vs. Zerg. The Mothership Core makes it possible to recall back. Let's see how much damage Squirtle can actually deal I, to his opponent. I can't believe he let that probe live. The probe lives and this means more forward pilots can be added later. This one's going to survive as well. He's trying to make a spine call here. Good force seal traps on the Queen. Queen will be assassinated. More Queens coming to join and they're like, well, this isn't a good idea. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> the Queens look at that and they're like, whoa! Well, let's head back home. This is a bit too dangerous. That Mothership Core makes a lot of noise. It's really scary. Yeah, it certainly does. And now the Zerglings run in, but this is a very, very scary timing here. And Squirtle could pull that off. He's really trying to go for it. And he takes on one of the Roach that is immediately being trapped here. Yep, he needs oh. to save his Mothership Core, though. Good yeah. Force Shields again. So the Zealots come coming, but the Queen sneaks out. The slippery little Queen there. He's going to lose one, though. There's no Transfuse. The energy wasn't there yet. And now, does he really kill this third? This is the big problem that a lot of Zergs have. Holding a third base against this timing is nearly impossible. And the Mothership Core is getting more and more strength to her. Uh, the energy nearing 200, and once that happens... We, we will see Time Warps yeah, in absolutely. addition to the recall. You're so right. And he can make Zealots work against Roaches with Time Warps decently well. And he's just catching these units and letting them, letting them spawn and die. He's intentionally not targeting those eggs down. And now he's let the Roaches come out and die. He's like, yep. fine, I'll take those for free. Takes the Roaches, takes down the Overlord too. Now finally the tech into Lair, but Squirtle is already firehead in the game. I think more Zerg seems to be canceling Larva like that, by the way. You get resources back, there's nothing to lose there. Uh, to, to, except two Roaches when you don't cancel. He's gonna actually commit to the attack now. He can recall at any time if he feels this is not a good idea. He wants to get up and hit those four seals just like we saw before he on the ramp, but the he, ramp. Doesn't, he doesn't do it. He Supply blocks his opponent though. ALBM has to pull all his drones now, and, and this is a very dangerous position, but we have the recall. Squirtle is looking at this like, you know what, I've done the damage. I completely supply blocked you, I did so much to you, I can just recall back and I will be in the best position ever. Now I can start to think about taking a third base even because he's got the tech in place at the Twilight Council to get Blink. Of course he wants to start plus one. That's one thing that's missing from a Protoss whenever they go for a time like this is the Forge and the upgrades. 
You know, these timings that we see of Proto's players now, especially in this matchup, are so damn sexy, it's unbelievable. Yep. I love this. Mothership Core really being put to some use, and it's really, really nice to see that. And it, it forces a reaction. Zerg players have to be more... Yeah, a little bit more cautious of how they approach the early game when they put down that third base. Well, we have the Infestation Pit now, and I think that Al is going to be going down the Swarm Host route. And he's... He's going to be facing a third base from Squirrel. Squirrel is going to drop that pretty soon. He's adding the gates now and the robo. He needs a Nidus, though, if he wants to do that. At least the Nidus would benefit him greatly. You usually want to build a Nidus so that you can put the Swarm Host in a position right at the front door of your opponent. I would be surprised to not see an Nidus. Walking across the map with them is a bit weird. The extra queens are there to deal with air units and also to use transfusers, so that's what you usually would do. But so far, we have the upgrade for the longevity of the Locust, but we don't see a Nidus just yet. Yeah, you're right. And, I mean, he could wait and try to surprise the opponent, wait until he gets like six or eight swarm balls before he makes it, but I, I think he should make it. Because let's talk a bit about the downside of what Squiddle does. Squiddle will have his Colossi very late in the game. And you need some kind of area of effect damage against the Locusts. If you don't have that, then the Swarm Hosts are going to be really strong. Yeah, he also has an Observer out already, so he can just walk across the map and be aggressive. Because he knows something like this is going on. He's like, it's probably either Mutas or it's going to be Swarm Hosts. And if he catches those Swarm Hosts in the middle of the map, it doesn't matter if they burrow or not, if he has an Observer with his army. Uh, he needs to burrow them now. He needs to, and he's going to lose... Well, he loses a lot of hit points there. You know, at least for now, that makes sure that if he gets more Swarm Hosts out there, it makes sure that uh, the Protoss player can't attack into them. Squirtle, that is. Because Squirtle has a massive army, and there are only three Swarm yep. Hosts. Five are observer. not enough. You the, need a lot more. The Observer's coming. He's about to have it. And as soon as he does, he can actually just kill these. He needs a lot more Swarm Hosts. This is not going to help. He's, he is not going to survive this. There's Squirtle's no way. just going to kill him, man. I think this is going to over about the watch here. With 10 Swarm Hosts, 12, 13 maybe, but with only 5, there is no way. With no support for them either. He's isolated here. All he's got is Splice Drones. GG. That was quick and painless. Well, it depends on who you're asking. Squirtle, though, he... He said it was pretty painless. That was a straight up win by Squirtle. A great aggressive play with the four gateways. Recalls out at the right moment. Squirtle knows that it's a very nice day in Korea today. It's also a national holiday, so all that he wants to do is go to a cafe, meet up with, uh, I don't know if he has a girlfriend, but he should have one. He is pretty handsome, as you can see on screen. So he's probably going to meet up with her and having a great day here. He wants to finish things Squirtle's fast. Like, I don't want a girlfriend. And he, he's like, I just want to win more money. I'll get a girlfriend later uh, when I, my hands start to get slow and stuff. And the girls like me even more because I keep winning title after title. See if he can do it, though. He's only up one game, but he's got a great map for game number two, Belshire Vestige, a very strong map for Bros players. Ah, come on, Wolf. Which guy could say no to this guy? Well, not very many of them. Not saying I would go gay for Squirtle, but still, it's like... Yeah, I, I feel you on that. Uh, he's got... He's definitely got a good... That's the haircut. wingman you want to have. Right there. The wingman, I don't know, like... He might take all the girls. You gotta be careful about that with Squirtle. You're right. Well, anyways. Back to StarCraft. We have now the second game coming up. Belcher Vestige, Squirtle with very aggressive play on the first map. A kill on ALBM. Not successful here. Still pumped. Can he turn things around? Game number two. This is WCS Challenger League Korea. Brought to you by Colorful.